Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of how to create your own first person shooter single player game. In this episode, we are going to have our enemy shoot back at us and we are going to give our player some health and have our player die when his health has been depleted. If you want to follow along with this series, check out the card that displays at the top right for the playlist. If you like the tutorials I create, then make sure to like and comment and subscribe down below and join the discord. If you want to support my creation of games and YouTube tutorials, then consider pledging on Patreon. Firstly we are going to download a shooting animation which will be the motion for our shoot animation. So in Unity go into your assets folder and expand your imported assets and then go down to your Jamo character and expand it. Then go down to your models folder and expand it. When you see the Jamo low poly model right click on it and then click show in explorer in the drop down. Once you have it open leave it and go to your internet browser and search for mixamo.com or just click on the link down below to download the animation we are using. So once logged into Mixamo.com, click on Upload and drag your Jamo low poly FBX file from the folder window that we opened inside of the upload box in Mixamo. Once your character is uploaded and you see the character is animating, then the rig works. We can click Next and search for a shooting animation. Choose the shoot animation which you want as I will choose this animation. So once we have chosen our shooting animation, we can click download and download our new shooting animation. Then open the folder we downloaded to. Back in Unity in our assets folder, expand the animations folder and drag and drop your downloaded shooting animation from the open folder into your animations folder where your idle and run animations are. Click on the animation and click on the animation tab in the inspector then rename Mixamo.com to shoot and hit apply. Expand the animation asset and go to the shoot motion and click on it and duplicate it with Control plus D. Delete the original shooting asset as we won't need it anymore. Now that we have our shoot animation, we are going to create a shoot state and a couple of new transitions so that our enemy can shoot the player when he is in range. In Unity expand your animation controller folder and double click and open your enemy AC. Once your enemy animator controller is open then you can right click anywhere on the empty space and click on create state and create a new empty state and rename it to shoot. In your animations folder with your animations drag the shoot animation into the motion box inside of the inspector window. Then at the top left in the animator window you can click on parameters and click on the plus to add another parameter which will be a trigger and call it shoot with a small s. Once we have done this we can create our new transitions. We are going to leave the transitions between idle and run as is and create a new transition from run to shoot by right clicking on the run state and then click on make transition and connect the transition with shoot. Click on the new transition and in the inspector window we are going to untick has exit time and in conditions click the plus we are going to set our condition to the shoot trigger. Then we are going to create another transition from shoot to run and click on the transition and in the inspector window we will add a condition and it will be on is running equal true which is correct. If it isn't then make sure it is. Let us create a transition from shoot to idle. Click on the transition from shoot to idle and in the inspector window add a new condition and make sure it is, is running and set this condition to false. Then make a transition from idle to shoot and click on the transition. In the inspector window we can untick has exit time and in conditions click on the plus and change the condition to our shoot trigger. Now our animations are all set up. So go back into the scene view and then go into your assets folder and then inside your scripts folder we create a new script and call it enemy raycast. Then add the script to your enemy prefab by opening your enemy prefab in the prefabs folder and drag the script inside the inspector window and open up the script. Now that our script is open in Visual Studio we can delete the start and update methods as we won't be needing them in the script. The Raycar script will allow the enemy to pick up whether the player is in front of it or not. Once that is done, we can start with our variables by typing private ray called sight. Then we need our enemy to detect us and for this we will need a detection range but we also want to be able to adjust the range in Unity if we want to. So we will then type serialize field private float detect range equal 5f. 
Then we want to write the functionality for our raycast to detect objects passing by. We will use the fixed update method so that it updates every fixed frame. Then we will write private void fixed update and inside the method we want to know where our point of origin of our ray must come from and where it must cast to and what will happen when our ray hits our player. So we will write site.origin equal new vector3 and inside of vector3 we will write transform.position.x and transform.position.y plus 1f and transform.position.z. We increase the position.y value with 1f to raise the region a bit higher to represent its eyesight. We then want to state in which direction our ray must be casted, so we will type site.direction equal transform.forward. Then we want to receive data back on what object the ray has hit. For this we write ray cast hit called ray hit. If our ray cast is hitting something, we want to check if our ray cast does hit our player and we will write if physics.raycast and pass in sight out ray hit and detect range. Then here we say that if our ray cast of type physics casts outward and hits something within the detection range, then the following will happen. So we type debug.drawline site.origin ray hit dot point color dot red which will cast a red line from the origin and in the direction we specified for visual purposes only when it hits an object we need to know if this ray cast hit the player or not for this we will create a new script so let's go back into unity and inside our asset folder and in our scripts folder create a new script and call it player behavior and attach the script to the player prefab by opening up your prefab first and then selecting your player capsule and then drag the script into the inspector window and open it up once your script is open delete the start and update methods and then type public float player health equal 100f we have created player health and gave the player 100 health points and that is all we need now for the player behavior script. Now let's go back to the enemy raycast script and create our player variable to reference the player by typing private player behavior called player. Now we will make our raycast pick up our player behavior script and assign it to the player variable we created by typing player equal ray hit dot transform dot get component player behavior. If the ray hit collides with an object with the player behavior script attached, then it will assign the value to the player variable, which then references our player. Our enemy must then be provoked to chase the player as we did before by shooting the enemy. We will write, if player is not equal to null, we want to call a method inside of the enemy AI script as is provoked is inside this script. To do this, we will head inside of our enemy AI script and after the engage target method, we are going to create a new public method and call it target detected. So we will type public void target detected and inside is provoked equal true. Head back inside the enemy raycast script and inside of the if statement we were busy writing, write get component enemy AI dot target detected. We can do this because we know that the enemy AI script and the enemy raycast script are on the same game object. Now our enemy will cast a ray and get provoked and start chasing our player when detected. Now we want the enemy AI to attack the player. Head back inside of the enemy AI script and create a new variable underneath private transform target. We will create a new header called attack speed just to separate this from the rest of the variables and private float attack rate equal 2f to attack every 2 seconds and private float last attack equal 0f to know when was the last time we attacked. You can make the attack rate a serialized field if you want to edit it in the inspector. And then in our engage target method after wait, we will create a method called shoot target and hit control and period and generate the method. Inside our shoot target method, we are going to compare the current time to what the last attack time was with the attack rate added to see if the enemy can attack. So we will write if time.time time 
is greater than last attack plus attack rate, then if this is true, then our enemy can attack. And we will type last attack equal time dot time to make sure that the new attack can only happen after our attack rate and this last attack time has been reached. We also want our player to take some damage when our player is shot. For this, we type target.getComponentPlayerBehavior.PlayerHealth minus equals damage. We do not have damage as a variable yet, so let's head to the top of the script and create the damage variable. Private float damage equal 10f. You can also make the damage a serialized field if you wish to edit this amount in the inspector. After we have dealt damage to the player, we would want the animation to play to show the enemy shooting. So for this, we will write get component in children animator dot set trigger shoot. If you have placed your animator for your enemy on a different object, then make sure to get it from the correct place. In this case, the animator is inside of one of the children game objects in this game object. To make sure we ran all the code correctly, let us also display the damage being dealt inside of the console by writing debug.log enemy has dealt the amount of damage damage to you. Let us head back inside of the player behavior script to make sure we add a dead state. Firstly, we will create a new variable private bool is dead equal false. Then we set up our awake method and type private void awake. Inside our awake method, we will say that our player has 100 health points at the start of the game. We do know that it is already hard coded at the top, but we would like to pass in the health at a setup stage in the future. So we will type player health equal 100f. Let us add in the update method again to do a check to see whether you are dead or not. Private void update. Inside our update method, we will type the following. If player health is less or equal than 0f, then our player will die. So we will say is dead is equal to true. We will use this value in one of the future episodes. After the player is dead, we can potentially play a death animation for the player or pop up a screen which states that you have died. For now, we will console log this. Debug.log you have been killed. Now you can save your script and head back into Unity. When we are back in Unity, expand player capsule inside of the player prefab and then select the capsule and remove the capsule collider as the player capsule already has a character controller which acts as a collider as well. Go out of the prefab and press play to test. Once we walk in front of the enemy to provoke it, we will then see that he chases us and shoots when in range. If you do not have the game on maximum view, you will be able to see the red line being drawn from the enemy to the player. We can also see that our enemy pretends to shoot us every 2 seconds and that our player is receiving damage and once your health reaches 0, it appears in the console that you have died. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, join the Discord channel if you want to learn more with game development and if you would just like to join the community or ask for any advice. Check out all the links down below for all of the information. Source code link is also down below as well as the full Git project. Keep well and see you in the next episode. Cheers.